Hey everyone, Alex Miller at Capneon here. In a second, I have a pretty vivid artificial intelligence adoption horror story about the National Eating Disorder Association and their chatbot that went a little bit rogue and probably an optimally bad direction. I'd like to articulate some abstract things first. Hype is driven by the cost-benefit calculus of if something works well enough to post something on social media. This is a relatively low risk environment. If you're doing something at a business, you might have a different risk profile set of concerns. Uh, optimally horrible thing you don't want to be in the news for. And these large language model applications in particular that are getting a lot of press are in the machine learning parlance not very interpretable. It's hard to know exactly what they're going to do. This is more often publicized as they occasionally do weird stuff, but then it's also difficult to say exactly what kind of weird stuff they could decide to do and when. So now I will tell the nightmare story. The National Eating Disorder Association, this organization that advocates about people should get treatment if they have eating disorders, being aware of, you know, possibly your desire to have a particular kind of body image is not realistic or healthy or, you know, I'm not an expert. They have a chatbot that is there to help people that are struggling with eating disorders in harmony with this organization's mission. Apparently that chat... Uh, the chat line was an artificial intelligence chatbot, and it was revealed by activists that this chatbot had been advising people to crash diet in unhealthy ways and recommending really severe, you know, eat this many calories, and yeah, you want to lose this many pounds per week, which is pretty close to exactly what this chatbot should not be doing, and that it's Maybe some of these people coming in are people that are unhealthily starving themselves in this chatbot that's supposed to be helping them. It's giving them tactical advice about how to starve themselves better. So that's, that's really bad. Uh, and I'll spell out why it's really bad in a second. Really interesting wrinkle in the story. The communications people at the NEDA initially come out and respond to these activists just saying that's a lie. Just you made that up. And I don't know the secrets of anybody's heart, but I would guess that there was some early phase where the NEDA didn't believe the true bad news about them. And that's a scary thing about using one of these pretty opaque artificial intelligence chatbots is it's not as easy to investigate, uh, oh, so-and-so talked to customer service rep number 95 uh, Bob. We can go talk to Bob. Bob is off the handle sometimes. It's just one super opaque thing that does what it does. And the whole point was to not have expensive humans babysitting every single conversation. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they believed their thing was working and they were as surprised and horrified as anybody else. Going back to my risk management essay here, in this case, the chatbot kind of headshotted an optimally terrible thing to do in that if it had been giving out bad stock advice, that would be less odious because, you know, not only is this a really terrible PR story for the NEDA, one imagines maybe they were sincere and wanting to help people. And we're unpleasantly surprised to discover the horrible advice that their pet AI was giving people. You need to think as a business about, well, what could go wrong with one of these things? They're a little bit unpredictable. They do weird, bad stuff sometimes. And compared to some other older generations of machine learning widget, this one can get kind of sideways on you in an unpredictable way, and that unpredictability is something to consider in and of itself. 